Hi, I'm Tom Long. This week on Island Meditations, we're celebrating the Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. For over three years, I've been following along with the lectionary and sharing my thoughts. Today's lesson invites us to be open to something new and different. I love how our Old Testament reading from Genesis 1 drops some hint of this week's themes. The story of the universe begins by telling us that it is the beginning. (laughs) In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There is even a picture of the Spirit of God hovering over the waters in Genesis 1 verse 2. The Spirit of God and water are going to play an important roles in the story of Jesus' baptism. On the second and third Sundays of Advent, we considered the baptism of John the Baptist. The Old Testament prophets had foretold that when Israel repented of their sins, the Messiah would come to deliver them, to restore Israel. We see this movement rising from the grassroots up. We're told that the whole Judean countryside And all the people of Jerusalem went out to John the Baptist. The Gospel of the Apostle John adds the detail that their religious leaders weren't getting it and sent emissaries to find out what was going on with this baptism movement. (laughs) For most of us, it isn't difficult to understand why your average person, a person like myself, would need to repent and witness to that repentance by being baptized. But we're left to wonder, as the Apostle John tells us, John the Baptist himself wondered, we're left to wonder why Jesus, the only perfect human being in history, would need to be baptized. I was at a men's retreat right right around the time of my senior year in high school. The speaker asked the group of hundreds of men a rhetorical question. Have you ever known anyone who was perfect? Then he left a dramatic pause to allow us to consider the question. But the silence was broken by a man who stood up in the back, piping up, Yes, apparently my wife's first husband. (laughs) The group of men had a good laugh at that, but no one really thought they knew a perfect person. There was a joke going around when I was a young man along the lines of, If you ever find the perfect church, don't join it. You'll ruin it. (laughs) The title of perfect person belongs only to Jesus, the incarnate God. So why would he participate in John's baptism of repentance? Mark, ever to the point and impatient with such tangents, doesn't even recognize that this question is on the table. We have to go to the Gospel of Matthew to find out that John the Baptist asked, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? What did Jesus answer? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. Okay, that doesn't exactly spell it out either. I mean, how does a baptism of repentance of a righteous man fulfill all righteousness? Jesus had already identified with us by taking on human flesh. But now he identifies with those who are preparing the way for God's kingdom to come through their willingness to repent. And as he identifies with all who are preparing the way for God to work in our lives and in our world, something amazing happens. We don't know everyone who saw this besides Jesus, but we're told that Jesus saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. As the Holy Spirit had hovered over the waters in Genesis 1 verse 2, now the barrier to heaven is torn open, and the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus like a dove. Now the voice that spoke the world into being is heard to say to Jesus, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. We don't know who else saw this or heard this, but the Apostle John reports that John the Baptist did witness to this having happened. 
This event, the tearing open of heaven, the Holy Spirit coming down, the Father's words of affirmation, this event marks the beginning of Jesus' ministry, his work of bringing to us the kingdom of God. Near the end of his gospel, Mark tells us, with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, from heaven downwards, in other words, we need to read the account of the Apostle John to know that Jesus' loud cry included the words, It is finished. His earthly mission began with the tearing of the heavens so that the Holy Spirit could come down and ended with the tearing of the curtain from the top down. The curtain hid the Ark of the Covenant over which God's Shekinah glory shone because from then on, God's presence was forever available to all who would choose to turn to God. The first Sunday of the new year, we celebrate the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry, the epiphany that he is the long-awaited Messiah. As we begin the new year, we may ask, what new beginning might God want to work in our hearts, in our lives, in our service to others? in our worship, thanks, and praise. Typically, uh, while I'm talking in these videos, I've tried to provide some beautiful scenery from our area of the coastal Carolinas. The lectionary is a three-year loop. We've been walking through these lessons together for over three years. Unfortunately, my desire to share my walk along the lectionary's three paths through the church calendar uh, failed to reach many people and in fact uh, the last few videos we've been only getting one or three people watching each video so I want to thank those who gave us a chance and especially thank Diane who gave me uh, some thumbs up and encouraging comments but I think it is time for me to reassess my ministry my approach has been to give viewers some beautiful scenery of coastal Carolina to keep us mindful of how awesome our Creator God really is, and at the same time thinking through the lessons God has revealed to us in His Word. But as I move into this new year, I'm asking myself if there's a new beginning in store for me. Is there a better way to share the beautiful truths of the Bible? Challenging myself and my fellow pilgrims to live out the kingdom of God's love, justice, service to those in need, and humbly keeping Jesus and his righteousness first in our lives. If you have any suggestions for a new direction or at least a new format, I would appreciate hearing from you in the comments below. And as we part this week, let's think about these truths. God entrusted us with this bountiful universe God wanted the best for us, so God the Son became incarnate. The Holy Spirit brought upon him the power and ministry of God while Jesus was still human, tearing apart the heavens to get here. Jesus went to the cross to defeat our sin and the death that sin brings upon us. And Jesus was raised in the victory of resurrection and has ascended back to his heavenly throne. God did all of this to be with me. God did all of this to be with you. God wants to do a new work in us. Let's say yes.